Hey team, we're going to learn how we can make requests to the Twitter API with an authenticated nextauth.js session. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. Nextauth.js is an awesome authentication library for Next.js that allows us to provide login and authentication to our applications with a whole bunch of different services like Google, Twitter, and GitHub. If you followed along with my last tutorial, I showed you how you can add a sign in with Twitter button right inside of your Next.js app where you can use your Twitter account or your visitors to your application can use their Twitter accounts to log in to your app. Now, this works really great if all we want to do is provide an authentication piece where maybe we're using a database to store information about that particular user session. But what if we want to do something further, such as use the API of those providers that we're logging in with, such as Twitter? So we're going to learn how we can take advantage of that Twitter session and use it to actually make requests to the Twitter API. Particularly, we're going to learn how we can make an authenticated search request to get a bunch of tweets, as well as how we can actually allow someone to compose a tweet and actually post it to Twitter. Now, nextauth.js doesn't actually provide those details automatically out of the box, so we'll take advantage of API routes in Next.js where we can actually grab the tokens from our Twitter session and use it to interact with the API. And to do that, we're going to use a nice easy wrapper around the Twitter API called Twitter Lite, which will just give us an easy way to actually make the request to that API. So to get started, we're actually going to pick up where we left off with our previous tutorial, where before we had our application where we could simply log in with Twitter. So if you want to follow along with me, I'm going to use this demo application that I have on GitHub, where you can find it at github.com slash Colby slash my hyphen off hyphen app, or you can find it in this YouTube video description. And we're going to use it pretty much as a Next.js starter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that URL then in my terminal, I'm going to navigate into my code directory and I'm going to run yarn create next app. And I'm going to call this project my off Twitter. And then we're going to also pass in dash E, which is going to allow us to pass in this app as an example, where we're going to paste in that GitHub URL. And Next.js is going to take that project. It's going to clone it down to our projects directory. It's going to install all the dependencies and we're pretty much going to be back where we left off at the end of the other tutorial. So once it's done, we can CD into that directory. I'm going to open it up inside of VS code. Now, again, if you're following along from the previous tutorial, this should be exactly what it was before. So I'm going to create a new .env.local file in the root of this project. And I'm going to paste in these values where, of course, my application, they're going to actually be my keys. But what we're going to want to have is our Twitter consumer key or the API key, as well as the Twitter consumer secret or the secret key, which these you can find inside of the developer portal inside of Twitter if you create a new application. And then finally, we have our next off underscore URL, which is going to be the URL of wherever we're using our application, where if we're developing it locally, it's going to be localhost 3000 if you're using the default Next.js port. But now inside of my terminal, if I run yarn dev, it's going to spin up a new Next.js application where we can see that we have this basic application where I can sign in with my Twitter account. And once it logs back in, we can see that we have our logged in state. And from here, we're going to be able to extend this and actually take advantage of that Twitter session to reach out to the Twitter API. Now, when working with authenticated APIs like the Twitter API, one of the most important things that we need as developers are those keys that we're going to pass in to the client in order to actually interact with that API. Now, two of the keys that we're going to pass in to this client, we already have available as those environment variables that we set up. But we also need to pass in the tokens that are generated whenever somebody logs in with their Twitter account. And to do that, we can take advantage of callbacks inside of nextauth.js, where because we don't get those tokens by default, we're going to tell nextauth that we want to be able to access those tokens anytime somebody logs in with a new session. If we look inside of the next off documentation, we're going to particularly look at this JWT function, where here we can see we have access to that token object, where we're going to use it to grab the account tokens for Twitter and attach them to that token object when we pass it back. So to start off, I'm going to simply copy this async JWT function, where if I navigate to pages, API, auth, next auth, we can see our next auth configuration. And if I add our new callbacks object, 
where I can pass in that async JWT function right on those callbacks object, which is going to allow us to actually interface here and do something with the token. Now, when we're using next.js, we have the ability to use multiple providers. So when we're doing this, we want to add these tokens in a way where we can access them, but we're not going to conflict with other tokens. So we're going to add a new property for that provider onto the token object where we'll store those values. To see what these objects look like, I'm going to console log both of them out. So I'm going to console log out my token. I'm going to also console log out my account where anytime you make changes inside of this function, we need to re-authenticate through the application. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out and then sign back in. And as soon as it redirects back, I can look inside of my terminal and we can see that we have our active token information, which is at this point really just going to include our basic information about our user. But we can also see that we're going to get our access and refresh token, which is used as part of the OAuth authentication piece when we logged into Twitter. So we want to ultimately store this access and refresh token for our Twitter provider where we can have access to it within a serverless function. So to start, I'm going to see if we even have an account provider. And if we do, I'm going to check and see if we're currently storing a key on the token to store that information in an object. So I'll say if account.provider and if we don't have a token where we have a key of account.provider, we want to create a new one and store that where I'll say token account.provider is equal to an empty object. And now I wanna see if we have an access token and if we do store that on that object. So I'll say if account.access token, we're going to say that I wanna store it on that provider object under access token, which would be equal to this account access token. And then I wanna do the exact same thing, but I'm going to rename that as refresh token. And then finally, we can clean up these console logs as now those are going to get returned right along with this token object. Now, one last thing, because we're trying to access this account provider directly, there's going to be instances where we don't actually have that account object available. So one thing I like to do is I like to also set a default value of that object just in case, that way we can make sure that it actually exists when we're trying to actually access it. Now, at this point, we're not going to be able to see anything because we're currently only using this client side. But what we're going to want to do now is create a serverless function where we're going to access this information, this token inside of that function and use it to be able to provide those requests. So under API, I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call Twitter. And underneath that, I'm going to create my first endpoint, which for our case, let's use search.js, where we're going to start off our function. I'm going to paste in some boilerplate code where all we're doing here is we're creating a new async function that we're exporting by default, which is going to be our serverless function handler. And we're going to try to do something and catch it if it doesn't work. Where in this case, all we're doing right now is we're returning a, spawn, a response, but here we're going to use it to actually make our request to Twitter when we have our session. We can even see that this endpoint is working just as expected if we go to it in our browser. Where this isn't actually going to be how we use it, but because it's so simple at this point, it's going to work where we can see we get our status of okay and an empty array of data. Next, now that we're storing that session information, we wanna be able to access it. So at the top, I'm going to paste in two imports where first, we're going to import our get session method from next off slash client. And we're also going to import the get token method from next off slash JWT, which is what we're going to use to get that information about our current Twitter session. Then we can go ahead and use that. So I'll say constant session is equal to, and I'm going to await get session, and I'm going to pass in an object as an argument, and I'm going to pass in request right through to that function. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with token, where I'm going to create a constant of token and pass in the request object into get token. Now let's try to log out these details where we can log out our session. We can also log out our token where if we now refresh our API endpoint inside of our browser, we can actually see that we're getting null values and that's because we don't currently have a session. So if we go back to our application, we can see that we were signed out. So I'm going to go ahead and sign back in with my Twitter account. And once we're redirected back, I can head back over to the endpoint and refresh it. And we can see that we actually get an internal server error. Now, if we look at this error, it's not super straightforward, but what's happening is we are required to actually use what's called an app secret when we're using our serverless functions to retrieve our information 
from our next auth session. If we head over to the next off options page, we can see where it's defined, but really we're going to pass in any kind of string that it's going to use to make sure that it's who we say we are. We can also see that under the using get token section, we can see where it's actually passing in that secret value straight into the get token function when it's using it inside of that serverless function. So inside of my code, I'm going to expand this object and I'm going to also pass in that secret key where I'm going to not define it directly as a string. I'm going to define it as an environment variable where we're going to call it next auth underscore secret. And the reason we want to do that is first of all, we don't want to store secret values like that inside of our code, but also it'll make it easier for storing this value so we can use it within the different contexts of the application. Now, in order to actually make sure that it's configured correctly, we also need to use this inside of our next auth configuration. So if we head back over exactly where we defined our callbacks, we're gonna to go to the bottom and we're going to pass in a new key of secret, just like inside of our get token function. And I'm going to pass in that same process and next auth secret. But now inside of our .env.local, we want to define that environment variable. So I'm going to paste that in there and we can really make this whatever we want. We could probably make sure that it's some kind of randomized string that someone can't guess. And you can generate that just like you would a password. But for now, just for these testing purposes, I'm going to put in ABCD1234. Now, again, you want to make sure you don't use ABCD1234. You want to make sure that you use a specific value for your application. Now, when it's done, we want to make sure we restart our development server. But now if we refresh the API, we can see that we still get an error, but it's a different kind of error. We're getting a signature verification fail. And that's because we're not actually passing in that app secret when we're making the request. That means we can no longer actually request this API endpoint as a separate page. We need to request it from inside of our actual application. So now let's add a little bit of a UI just so that we have something that we can test this with. Now over to my index.js file, which is my homepage, I'm going to add a simple search form where we're going to be able to pass in a search request and eventually show those results. And because I don't want to spend a lot of time on this particular UI, as it's really just for an example, I'm going to paste in some of these different values. First off, I want to use React State in order to store the results that I'm going to use when I create that request to the search endpoint. So I'm going to first import use state from React. Next, I want to create that search form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all this different UI inside of this grid div. I'm also going to remove that style where here I'm going to paste in my form. And now once I paste that in, we can see that this is actually a pretty straightforward example of a UI where here I have my form and I'm already defining an on submit function, which is going to trigger any time I click this button to submit this form. But we're defining an input that we're going to take that search query as a value. We're then also going to loop through any of our statuses that we're going to store in our react state. And we're just going to define it in a list where we're going to loop through and say for each of those statuses, we're going to simply print it on the screen. We're going to pass in the text as well as who actually posted it. Now to define this actual submit handler function, we're going to scroll back up to the top of the component where now I'm going to pass in my instance of use state where I'm going to create that state of statuses where I can also set those statuses where then with my new function for handle on search submit, which again, that relates to that form that we just created. I'm going to first prevent any default actions from handling that way. It's not going to try to submit the form to the browser itself, but we're going to grab the form data from our form that's getting submitted. We want to find that query value from the form and we're going to use it to post to our API, which is slash API slash Twitter slash search, which we're working on as we saw before, where we're going to pass in a body as a post where we're going to pass in that query. And then finally, once we have those results, we're going to be able to set that as our statuses state, which is then going to be looped through inside of the UI. Okay, so now that we have this UI, let's actually see how this works. Back inside of my application, we can see I'm not logged in, so I'm going to sign in again. This happens sometimes when we restart our server because it cancels out the actual session. But now we have the search form and I'm gonna pass in Colby Fayok. And we can see that we're actually not getting anything. But if I look inside of my developer tools, I'm going to do that again, where I'm going to click that search request. We can see that we are making that request, but we are only returning no results, just like we did when we were actually working on that serverless function. So we don't have any results to loop through. 
But if we look inside of the headers tab, we can see that we are passing in that query to the actual function. So now let's take that query and let's actually make the request to the search API so that we can pass that back to our application. When we have our serverless function, we have this request object. And on that request object, we have a body property, which is going to be what's passed in as the body when we're posting to that endpoint. So the first thing we want to do is we want to grab that body. So we're going to create a constant of body, and we're going to set that equal to json.parse request dot body and the reason we're using json parse is because we're passing it in as a string which is required when we're actually posting data to an endpoint and then finally we're going to destructure that query variable since we're now grabbing that body and we're going to destructure it straight from body before we go further we can even see that this works by logging out that query where now if i try to submit that search request again along with my session and token information we can see my query of colby fayok so now let's actually use this to reach out to the Twitter API. So first, we're going to install that Twitter Lite package. So I'm going to copy the install command. And back in my terminal, I'm going to install that package and then restart my development server. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually import Twitter Lite. So at the top of my search function file, I'm going to paste that in so that we have access to Twitter Lite. And now we ultimately want to create a client, which is what we're going to use to make the request. Now, if we scroll down a little bit on this page, we can see that we have a verifying credentials example, which we can use this to copy and paste just to make it a little bit easier to get this up and running. So below everything before this try catch, I'm going to paste in that client constant. And we can see here that it's saying that both of these values, the subdomain and the version are the default, and we're not going to change that. So for simplicity, let's first get rid of those. I'm also going to get rid of those different con comments, but now we're going to be able to populate these different keys with our values. To start, we're going to use that same client ID and client secret that we're currently using to configure next auth. So I'm going to paste in those values over inside of my search endpoint where for my key, I'm going to pass in my consumer key. I'm going to also grab my secret and pass that in as well. But now for these other token values, we're going to grab these from our actual token, which we stored with that Twitter object. So for the token key, I'm going to say, I want my token .twitter .access key. And then for the secret, I'm going to pass that in as my refresh token. So I'm going to say token .twitter .refresh token. And actually that's meant to be access token. So we're ultimately going to be passing in our token.twitter.access token and our token.twitter.refresh token. But now we're going to have an authenticated client so we can actually make our Twitter request. So to do this, we're going to use the search tweets endpoint. And to do that with Twitter Lite, we're going to say constant results is equal to await client.get. We're near here, we're going to pass in that endpoint of search slash tweets along with a second argument, which is going to be a new object, where we're going to pass in the property of Q, which stands for query in our case, which will pass right in our query that we were able to grab from the body. And then finally, we're going to take those results and pass in our data of results.statuses. But now if we head back to our application and we search inside of our form, we can see that it's going to make that request. And now we have all of our tweets showing right inside of our application. We can even see that inside of the the develop we can even see that inside of the developer tab if we look at the preview we can see all of our data getting passed back which we have access to now inside of our app now if you're following along with me you might notice that the app gets a little bit cramped because of the way that nextjs adds its default styles which we inherited from the previous tutorial so just as a quick tip, if you head back over to index.js and remove the class name of container on that parent wrapping div, you'll be able to see that we just get a standard experience where we're able to scroll through this application. So now we're currently creating an authenticated request to search for tweets, but what else can we do? Well, not only can we search for tweets, we can actually post new tweets. So we're going to go and we're going to use the statuses update endpoint where we're going to create a new tweet. So to start, our code is going to look very similar to this search endpoint. So I'm actually going to just simply duplicate this search endpoint and I'm going to call it tweet.js. We're inside here. The first thing we want to do is we want to update our query to status as we're ultimately going to post in a status that we want to update. Then we're going to scroll down. We want to update so that we're going to post a new status. So I'm going to update it to client.post.status. 
And I'm going to also update it to statuses slash update, where because we're no longer actually passing in a query, I want to pass in my status. And then finally, because we're not actually retrieving information, we no longer need to pass back data. So I'm going to simply remove that data attribute as we just want to make sure that it's actually working. In order to test this out, we're going to do something very similar to what we did with the search form. So above my search, I'm going to pass paste in a new form and we can see here that I have a text area where our input this time is going to be the name of status and we're going to simply tweet this. But we have this new function that we're going to call handle on tweet submit. And this function will look really similar to our previous one for our actual search submit where we're going to prevent the default functionality. We're going to grab our form we're going to grab the status from that form and we're going to actually post that status up to our Twitter tweet endpoint. And then finally, if it's successful, we're not actually going to do anything with the results. All we're going to do is we're going to paste in a simple alert that says success. And we can see our tweet form. So I'm going to say trying out a new tweet. We click tweet and it looks like our error wasn't actually caught and we're actually getting an error. So let's see what's actually happening. We have our try catch here. So let's log out what this error actually looks like because apparently we're not getting that message getting sent through. So if we try to send that again, we can see that we're actually getting a 401 that this feature is temporarily, temporarily unavailable. And it looks like earlier when I was trying to debug this myself, I was also getting a message saying that this request looks like spam. Now that might be because the account that I'm trying to test this with literally has zero followers and I'm not following anybody. This is really just a test account that I created for this type of stuff. So let's give it a try quick on my actual normal account. Once I'm logged into at Colby Fayok, I'm going to try trying out a new tweet Let's send this again. And this time we can see that it posted right to my profile. The cool thing is we were able to use nextauth.js to create this new Twitter session where we can interact with the Twitter API as much as we want, of course, within the limitations of not trying to look like we're spamming the application. Additionally, we can even extend this past Twitter and we can use other providers to do similar things. Whether we want to use GitHub to collect some of our code information or Amazon or really any of these providers you see here, we have a lot of options for being able to use Next Auth to create easy sessions and then use that those sessions to reach out to existing APIs. NextAuth.js is powerful alone for being able to give us an easy way to authenticate people for our applications. But by taking advantage of those sessions and using them to interact with our different providers APIs, we can do a lot of things that enables us to add cool features to all of our different applications. What's your favorite authentication provider? Is it on the next auth list? What kind of things do you like to do with their API? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.